Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to add a sun in Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is what we're gonna be doing right here. We're gonna be adding this sun in. Now, if you take a look, the only thing that is here is actually just this piece of footage, and I actually even color graded the piece of footage, so it really just started off as a normal shot with no sun, and then we added in all of the elements, and created this beautiful sun. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get started on this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create myself a new composition. So I grabbed some footage from Envato Elements, a great subscription-based uh, service online where you pay a monthly fee and you get an unlimited amount of stock footages, photos, templates. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description below. Once you have imported the footage, I went ahead and went to Lumetri Color, and I just played around with it. You can really fine tune this, but I just made the highlights a little towards the orange. The shadows tinted a little towards the yellow. I then made the vibrance and the saturation go up, and then I played around with the different correction, added it a little more towards the orange side, and then a little contrast because it is uh, supposed to be, you know, that sort of golden hour look to it. So that's basically what I did. Now, if you'll notice, the shadows are coming sort of top left to bottom right. So this isn't going to be perfect because of that. So if someone was looking, you want to try to make sure that the shadows are correct. But if it's not the most professional thing in the world or you're doing just a really quick clip, people aren't going to notice that. So let's get started on the coloring of this first. So what we want to do to start off with this is we want to go ahead and create ourselves a new shape layer. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and go down to 10% fit. And you're gonna see we have this giant box here and we wanna grab and create a giant box here. Now the reason we're creating a box that's way larger than our actual composition is because we want to move the gradient we're gonna create around without having edge clipping. So we're actually just gonna create the gradient from here to here and then we'll be able to move it all within the space and actually animate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this graphics to right about, you know, just the length of the clip, however long you need it to be. We're then going to go to the Essential Graphics panel right here. Again, if, there are, if you don't see any of these windows, if you ever go up to Window, just click one of these check marks and bring it up. We're going to click on this Fill button. Make sure you've clicked on the shape, and we can name it, for example, Sun. Click on it. Go down to Fill. And now we have this picker right here. So we're going to go into the Radial Gradient, and we can then begin building our Sun. So to start off, you'll probably have a single color like this. And you'll see that I can't really see it right here. So if you want, go ahead and just click OK on this. Go to your left side, go down into the shape, drop it down into the effect controls we're here, and bring this position over to a place that we can see it. Or better yet, if you click on this, then click on the fill button. Click on the fill. It's a little tricky to sometimes um, get it. So click on the appearance. Go to your selector tool. There it is. Grab this center icon, and you can actually center the the effect here and we want to bring it over like so so make sure you're on effect controls appearance then your selector tool then you should be able to actually control the gradient this side is where it starts this side is where it ends we can now zoom it back in so we can actually see the gradient we're building go back to the fill button and now we can actually build this gradient so to start off we want some sort of a very hot color we're looking for a yellowish red um, depending on how strong you want that sun to be so we're going to be looking at a yellowish red but we want it near the white side this is the center of the sun it should almost be white we then want to add a new color right to the right of this we want to bring it up in the yellow just a little bit towards that orange and then drag this over towards a more stringent color as well our next one we're gonna do the exact same thing now we're getting really close to that orange because we're at the, for this particular case, we're at an evening sun. If you're doing this, for example, in the middle of a sunny day, you might want to go a little uh, more yellow on this. We're then going to go with the next one. And I just like to make this this deep sort of orange. This is going to be that actual evening sun, not too orange, maybe right about there. Now, at the very top here is your your gradient. So this is um, how see-through it's going to be. So what we want to actually do is we want this end one to be zero. You see the opacity is at zero, zero. And this beginning one to be 100. Now, in a in this case, we shouldn't be able to see through the sun right here yet. It's too bright. The, the camera is not going to pick up on that. So what we can actually do is create ourselves another stopper at 100% and sort of just create ourselves a little buffer room here. So maybe just drag this 100 just a little bit over. This gives us sort of a, a more opaque center, and then you can see through just a tiny bit of it as it comes out. It makes it look a little more realistic. Okay, so now we click OK on this, and we are ready to actually begin animating this. So we need to animate this so that it actually sticks into the scene. 
So to do that, I'm going to slide right to here. I'm going to go to the right, right like that. And then when I click on this, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the left side here. We're going to go down the shape and the transform. And because we made this layer gigantic, we can move this back and forth. And you see that the gradient moves with it, and we don't have the issue that we had before. Now, one thing that we may want to do is actually adjust this gradient to be just a little larger because you could see that it looks like a circle. So if we go out to 25% here, let's go back to that appearance and let's drag this gradient out just a touch more. Let's let it actually have an ability to um, create a, a nice circle there. And if the sun's too big, we can always scale it down a little bit or, or something like that a little later, but we're gonna make sure that we are creating the most realistic thing possible here. So we're gonna do that. And yeah, maybe we just do just scale it down a touch here which actually just brings that in. So, you know, it's kind of just a balancing act right here of what we want to do. So I think that's probably good right there. So now back to fit. We're then going to go to, again, effect controls, transform, position. We can now click and drag this position around. So we want to go ahead and make it centered here. If you want to make this a little easier on yourself, go down into the opacity and drop this down a touch just so you can see behind it. And we want to try to get it right in this little U here. So we're going to go to the clock, the stopwatch right here, and we're going to create it. The reason I'm doing it at the end is because this is where we actually see the final position. We're going to work backwards. It works a little easier when you can actually see where you're looking. So we're going to go ahead. We want to move this as little as possible because we don't want the sun to be jumping around. So we're going to let the, the, the Adobe actually do most of the work here. So every time you move it, you then want to uh, click on the transform again and move it back over to here. So we're gonna move the footage right here. You don't wanna click on this dot, you actually wanna move the footage overall. Um, if you click on the dot, all you're gonna be doing is moving the gradient and it's not actually animated, so you're not gonna be doing anything. So now we're actually moving this into the center there, just like so. So we're then going to jump to the next one. So I'm holding the shift key when I hit back, so I go five at a time. So we're just gonna move back some more, click and drag it down some more, and you should be seeing this animation line right here. Back here, and in this particular case, we actually went down into the right, so if we wanted to make this perfect, we should have we should make another keyframe in there, but I'm trying not to waste everyone's time here, so we're just gonna keep going like so. Now, once you get outside of this range, this is gonna take a little bit of finessing. You're gonna have to sort of guess where that center line is, and you can probably do this pretty well. When you don't actually see the center, um, it doesn't really matter how accurate you are. As long as it's not horribly off, then it should look fine. And we're getting to a point where it's actually going to be out of frame. So we're going to drag it a little bit more down. And then it should be fine right about here. Okay, so now we've actually created the sun. Let's go ahead and bring this opacity back up. And let's take a look at what we've created here. So... And that's looking pretty good. So right now, it looks a little abrasive. So how do we fix that? We're going to go down into our blending mode. And you want to choose between soft light, hard light, or pin light. In, my, in this particular case, pin light looks really good. It kind of looks really sunnish in the back right there. Um, I think it looks like a good setting sun. Uh, you can see, remember I said that it looks a little bad in some places. You just want to clean up the animation sometimes to make that look a little better, see how it jumps. But that's OK. For this particular example, it's working fine. Um, so in this example, pin light actually looks really good. If you want to make it maybe a little different, um, we can go down to the make sure on the graphics layer. The other one, soft light is a little doesn't really create a lot here. Uh, creates a nice like soft look. Um, and with our next step, we can that actually might look good. Hard light looks good. And actually, in this particular example, whoops, that's linear light. See, they both look pretty good. I think I might go with. I'm gonna go with pen light again. I like pen light for this. So it creates a nice sort of overarching, it looks like there's actually a sun at the bottom. Now, next step, this is what really sells the effect. We need that camera lens flare. So we're gonna go into our layers down here. We're gonna create a new black layer. It's right to the right, left of this trash can, black video. Click OK. Click and drag that on over everything. We're then going to go to our effects. We're gonna look for lens flare. It's gonna be under video effects, then generate, then lens flare. Definitely add this to a black video. If you add it to anything else, like for example, the skyscraper, it will take the video over. So add it to the black video. 
We have ourselves a lens flare, but we would actually see what we're doing. So make sure you have the black video selected, back up to effect controls, blend mode, down into screen. And now it has screened backwards and here is the center. So we need to do one more animation. So we're gonna to go to the very end here again. We're then going to click on lens flare, go down to flare center and drag this to that exact same location. Turn on the animation marker and let's quickly add in the, the flare. Now what this does and why this is important, um, sometimes you have to click up and back for it to actually show that little thing. You wanna grab the outside of this so you move it and not the center. So the reason that we want to do this is it's going to create this element, this moving element that looks very realistic. This is what's gonna sell the effect. It's gonna look like that the camera was actually being affected by this bright sun. And so we want that to happen. We want there to be this element of realism with it. And sometimes I go forward a little bit just to see if the, the track looks good. Um, so you see we're getting to the very end here. So we're gonna drop it out to 25% again. Keep animating backwards. Drag it down. And this one's a little more important to get right because you do have those elements that are moving on your screen. So you just wanna, again, if this is gonna be a really professional thing, you wanna make sure that you are adjusting it the best that you can um, and actually spending a little more time than like two minutes drawing the mask. And I think at this point, we're probably pretty safe to just go all the way back and then just sort of drag it down to the bottom here. So now let's take a quick look at what we have created here, back to fit. Play it through, we have this light coming down, which then goes in tune with our center sun. And we have created ourselves the effect right here. Um, if this effect is a little choppy for you, click that enter key, it'll turn this red to green, which actually renders out the frames. Um, and then you can just clean up the mask and you've got yourself a good setting sun right here. Uh, like I said, you can add this to any really any, anything you want, a field, a, a another sort of sunny day. You mess around with those lighting effects and you animate it, you change up its color, and you can basically add a sun wherever you want to add a sun. Thanks to everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and subscribe button. I try to make a video every other day. If you'd like to learn about Premiere Pro in a tutorial-based manner, I have created a course. Check out the link in the description below for that course. It is a course that I've created from scratch that teaches just like this video taught you in small incremental tutorial-based learning. Thanks everyone for joining me. Until next time, see ya.